Hi, everybody. Welcome to the 2016 Hour of Code. Uh, I don't see any classrooms in there. I'm going to have uh, Maddie from my team put a, cl click in the, in the chat room, uh, the chat window, to say how you can join, because I'd love to actually see the, there's, there's apparently 37 or 38 classrooms all at once uh, looking in on this, on this broadcast. But since I don't see you, it kind of feels empty to me. Um, but I'm just going to talk to, to uh, you know, the classrooms out there. You know, there's welcome to the Hour of Code. This is the second day of Computer Science Education Week. And the Hour of Code campaign is something that you know, we launched just three years ago. It's been amazing to see this campaign spread not just throughout the country, but throughout the entire world uh, in, in just the last three years. So today, on the three-year anniversary of the Hour of Code, starting the, the fourth year of the campaign, we just announced that 300 million hours of code have been done by students. And students have, have written 20 billion lines of code. That's such an incredibly large number. To, you know, to put it into context, you know, the average phone, you know, my phone has maybe 50 million lines of code. Uh, you know, students across the world have written almost 1,000 times as much code as it takes to create something like the Apple operating system or the Windows operating system. Uh, I couldn't be more proud of what we've done with this campaign. Uh, you know, I started Code.org because of this belief that every student in every school should have the, the chance, the opportunity to learn computer science. Well, I started learning coding myself on my own when I was 12 years old. Uh, and back when I started, it wasn't nearly as fun. It wasn't nearly as easy. It wasn't nearly as accessible. But I fell in love with it because when you write code, when you do work creating technology, you're not just solving problems. You actually are creating things that are yours, that you can share, that you can show other people. It's a lot like art. It's a lot like creative writing. It's a lot like music, except because it's technology, you can click a button and instantly have it spread to lots of other people. Uh, and you know, I've had a fantastic career personally in technology because of the, the success I've had learning to code. Right now, where we are in our current world is that the opportunity that I had is something that every student should have. We live in a world where we all carry cell phones in our pockets. Every new car has tons of computers in it. Every industry is being changed by computer science. The, the, you know, the communication we have via phones and telephones and whatnot are all being managed by computers. Our entertainment and movies and music videos and animations are all being created by computers. Agriculture is being planned using, using computers. Uh, banking, commerce, manufacturing, everything you see around us is being impacted by technology. Yet our schools don't teach even the basics of how this technology works, how to create it, what's an algorithm, what's inside an app, how does the internet work, what's cybersecurity about, how does encryption work. These are all topics that impact not just kids, but adults, and they impact every job and every type of field of study. And so getting students and, and schools to learn computer science, just like we learn English and math and reading and history, is something that every school in the entire world should do. Uh, with the Hour of Code, you get the chance to spend at least one hour on coding and computer science to see what it's like. And then you can decide from there, do you want to go beyond one hour or not? Uh, you know, Code.org and, and hundreds of partners have made this campaign work and spread throughout the entire world. Uh, I want to see if I can get questions from the audience to, to answer. Uh, I still I can't really actually see any of the folks out there, uh, but I would love to see if you have any questions. All right, well, I have one question here, uh, and this is from Alice in uh, in Idaho, and she asks, what's the best way to get my school district on board with the Hour of Code and with computer science? Uh, Alice, that's a great question. Uh, you know, the Hour of Code is really just the first step of adding computer science to a school's curriculum or to a school's program. You know, we don't have an hour of math. We have math every day, all week, all year. We don't just have a, an hour of English. We don't just have an hour of science. And computer science is just as important as some of these fields that needs to be integrated into the school system. So you know, what I'd recommend, Alice, is to, to approach your school's administration after the Hour of Code, 
show them how much the, the students and classrooms enjoyed it, and ask them to make computer science a priority within the school or the district. And in fact, if you go to the, uh, the code.org website and click the little button that says stats, there's actually a letter there. There's a template letter that you can send to any principal or administrator uh, that tells you how to do that. All right, the next question uh, says, my kids love the Hour of Code, but what's the best thing to do when they get stuck? Uh, so um, I'm, I'm assuming that's coming from a teacher who uh, has to sort with how to, how to uh, students deal with basically, you know, if you get stuck doing one of the Hour of Code tutorials. The first thing I'd say is coding may start easy and fun. It's not easy for anybody. Uh, this isn't something that the adults learned when they were growing up. Any of the teachers in these classrooms weren't coders. Uh, every teacher in America learned math and English when they were growing up, when they were children. Almost none of them learned computer science or coding just because it's so new and it's not been available in school. So if you're stuck, it's not because you're dumb and you can't sort it out. It's because you know com learning computer programming involves making mistakes, making bugs, trying it different ways until you get it to work. Now, if you try many different ways and you still can't get it to work, the easiest thing to do is ask another student to show you how. The only way to learn is from making mistakes and then, and then having somebody walk you through it. And what's fun about this is instead of asking just the teacher to show you, you can also engage other students in doing this as well. Because you know, when, you, when you're in math class and you make a mistake, the teacher is usually the expert and that's who you go to. When you're doing computer science, if your teacher is new to it as well, all of you are learning together, and that's something you can embrace and enjoy. Uh, and you can just raise your hand and say, I'm stuck here. Can anybody help me out? Uh, you know, don't be stuck quietly. Uh, and I'm, I'm really serious about this, because you might be in a, one of these steps of one of these puzzles, and you know you're not getting it right, and you're not sure how. And then you're just stuck there and sitting. Raise your hand and ask for help, and ask the whole classroom, hey, has anybody figured out how to do number five? And then everybody can help each other. Uh, that's the best way to do it. Um, there's a question from April De Gennaro saying, uh, what was your main inspiration for starting the Hour of Code? Uh, this is a great question. Uh, you know, the idea for the Hour of Code is literally only three years old. It's so amazing that this is a program that is, that is now worldwide in entire countries. Uh, but what happened is Code.org had started as a very simple effort to get schools to think about uh, adding computer science to their, course, to their courses and their schools. And tens of thousands of teachers had reached out to us saying, we'd love to do some kind of computer science in our school. But every school is different. There's elementary schools, there's middle schools, there's high schools. Some schools are ready to put a full course in their programs. Some just want an after school program. So what I thought was, what's the one thing that every school can do? What's the one thing that every student could do that's fun enough and easy enough? And the idea we thought is, how about just one hour of computer science just to give it a shot. Uh, and you know, the goal of the Hour of Code isn't that everybody's going to become a coder in one hour. And the reality is most of you aren't going to become coders when you grow up. The real goal of the Hour of Code is for you to recognize this is what it's about and to realize that this is fun so that if you like it, you can go on into it and pursue it longer. Uh, and I hope most of you enjoy it. I hope most of you consider doing this much, much longer than an hour uh, because you know the real goal is for many of you to take 100 hours of computer science and learn just as much computer science as you'd learn a subject like science or history. Um, the next question is from Elizabeth at People's Elementary in Peachtree City in Georgia. Uh, so Elizabeth asks, what would you say to help students persevere? Uh, I guess this is a little similar to the, the question about what you do when, when you get stuck. Uh, but you know the great, the great thing I'd say is that, you know, almost all kind of learning has ups and downs. Sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's fun. Sometimes it's hard. Uh, the the cool thing about writing code is that there's always a way to get it right, but there's not just one right answer. You know, with math, there's often problems where, you know, three plus three, the answer is six, and if you get it right, you're right, and if you get it wrong, you're wrong. When you're creating something using code, it's, it's a little bit like math, but it's a lot like art as well. There's often multiple ways of doing the same thing. 
There's sometimes you're given a puzzle, and there's five or six different ways you can solve it. Or you're just given something where it's not a puzzle. You can just make whatever you want, and you can make your own rules. Uh, and so realizing that there's not only one right answer, and you can make your own rules, is one of the best ways to, to get past sort of a problem when you're stuck. Um, there's a question from students in Houston saying, what's your favorite part about the Hour of Code? Uh, my favorite part by far is hearing from students, hearing from teachers, seeing how much fun classrooms have with doing this. Uh, and you know, it's sometimes, sometimes there's issues, sometimes not everything works out perfectly, but you know, we make, make it work. Uh, but knowing that literally worldwide this week, tens of millions of students are all together participating in this campaign and coding all at the same time, not just using code.org tutorials, but using fantastic tutorials from companies like, like Scratch, like Tinker, like the, the new Moana tutorial by Disney, the new Minecraft tutorial by Microsoft. There's so many different activities people are doing. And just knowing how much the kids are enjoying it and seeing the looks on their faces interacting with students in schools is by far my favorite thing. All right, next question. I have time for two more questions. Uh, I have a, there's a question from a teacher asking how we, uh, how we managed to get the Prime Minister of Canada to kick off this year's Hour of Code, and what was that like? Uh, so in case you didn't see it yesterday, you know, we, we, we always try to do something special for the, for the first day of launching of the Hour of Code. So two years ago, I had the good fortune of helping President Obama write his first line of JavaScript code using the Anna and Elsa Frozen tutorial. Today we, uh, or yesterday, we were in Canada to kick off the international campaign uh, from you know, the prime ministers, uh, with the prime minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, and two lucky classrooms in Ottawa. It was snowing out there, so it, was, you know, it felt like Christmas. Uh, and the prime minister of Canada said something really special. This is a guy who, he's currently you know, the head of state. He's like the president of the country. But he used to be a, he used to study engineering in school. So he said that he studied C++ programming when he was in college, and he'd even done logo programming, which is a lot like the, the frozen artist tutorials that Code.org has. So he was very familiar with it. And he was saying how, you know, even though he's running a country right now, having learned how to do code helps him take very big problems and break them into smaller pieces. And it also helps build the confidence that if you can tell a computer what to do, you can build a system, you can design things, then you can design things to do anything, and it helps build your own sort of problem-solving skills. It was so fantastic to be able to kick off a campaign you know, with the head of a country, uh, and he's one of the most popular prime ministers in the world. Um, there's two more questions. There's one student saying, what coding language should I learn? Uh, I'm guessing this is a high school student, because when you're in elementary school and even in early middle school, all of the coding is in drag and drop platforms like code.org or like Tinker or like Scratch. Once you reach high school or once you're older, there's so many different computer programming languages. Uh, but the thing I'd say is computer languages are not like spoken languages. If you want to learn French, there's 10,000 words to memorize. Everything has a different word. Every object, every verb, everything is different. If you want to learn a different coding language, there's only about 100, maybe 200 words to recognize. And they all use the same grammar. So it's always the ordering of things is the same. How do you do a repeat loop in one language? OK, you need to learn. You know, Sometimes it uses semicolons. Sometimes it uses parentheses. That part is different. But it's still maybe 100 or 200 words, and they're very similar. So any language you start with, you can learn a different computer programming language in maybe two, three weeks. Once you get good at one, you can get good at the next one. So pick whichever one you want. The language that Code.org recommends people start with is JavaScript, but there's many other languages. It depends on really what you want to build. So if you want to build an iOS app for, for your iPhone, you would need to learn the Swift language. If you want to build an Android app for a different phone, you'd want to use the, the Java programming language. If you want to build a website, there's a different language for that. Uh, so you can start on any one of them and then learn the next one. Um, the last question from Maura is, what is next for code.org uh, after the Hour of Code? Uh, and this is a great question to close on. Uh, you know, The goal of the Hour of Code isn't for every student to learn for just one hour. 
our goal and the goal of all the organizations and all the teachers who are participating in this is for students to be prepared for a 21st century that it's being changed in, by technology in ways that we can't even predict. Technology is moving much faster than any of us have been prepared for. So, so the goal of the Hour of Code and the goal of Code.org is to change the entire school system to teach computer science just like we teach math, science, history, foreign languages, and the arts. Uh, and so what happens for us behind it's the Hour of Code and beyond the Hour of Code is to work with schools and especially with teachers to teach multiple hours of code as full year, school year long courses just like math class, just like history class, just like biology class. Uh, and so for every one of you doing the Hour of Code today, as if you're teachers, if you enjoy it, I encourage you to go on. And if you visit code.org or visit the Hour of Code website, there's buttons and links for how to go beyond an Hour of Code. Don't stop at one hour. If you enjoy it, whether alone as a student or with your classroom, go, go, and, uh, go beyond that and ask your school to teach full computer science. Um, I'm out of time, and I want to let you all get back to your actual coding. So I just want to say thank you so much to all the teachers and to all the students for participating in this year's Hour of Code. It's so incredible to be part of creating something that has reached literally 300 million hours of code have been done by at least one out of 10 students on the entire planet. So each one of you in your classrooms, if you look around, there's 300,000 classrooms just like that, kids on every country in the pla on the planet, from Russia to Bangladesh, from Armenia to Japan, from Argentina to Zimbabwe, everywhere in refugee camps even, you know, everywhere students are doing the Hour of Code. It's so cool to be part of something that's global in this way. I hope you have a great time. Thank you so much, uh, and enjoy your coding. Bye-bye.